I'm a lonely Goomba, stuck between two pipes. Well, guess I keep on gaming for the rest of my life. But before we start, a shout out to today's sponsor, Opera GX. Thanks for sponsoring the video, chaps. You ever felt like your browser is devouring your PC resources like gear beyond a rampage? Say no more. With Opera GX, you can easily limit how much CPU or RAM it uses. And it's simple to do, look. I mean, I'm sorry, Chrome, but you're being outmatched here. Ain't even close. But that's not all, because Opera GX lets you have, um, just a bit of fun too. You can customize the heck out of this thing. I mean, download a mod and suddenly you've got Mario chilling in his pants, music's playing, and you've got cool sound effects when you type or open and close tabs. I mean, maybe I've gone a bit too far, but you can easily customize aspects to make it just right. Or download another mod free on the GX store. I mean, there's loads of retro ones too. Apple GX also uses AI in a cool way with AI prompts. Summarize entire articles, explore topics further, or even translate it. Just highlight the text and click the prompt you want, and it'll land all the rest. You can also use ChatGPT or ChatSonic, readily available on the sidebar. So the choice is yours. Then there's the GX corner. Remember those old gaming magazines back in the day? I mean, it's basically a digital version of that, featuring news, articles, deals, releases, and even had big free games, keeping you up to date in one place. Eh, this game looks pretty neat actually, hope it doesn't suck, and best of all, switching to Opera GX is quick, quicker than your boy Sonic over here. Um, hi Sonic. See, it's equipped with a special tool that allows you to import all your settings from your previous browser. I mean, browsing history, bookmarks, cookies, everything really. It's even compatible with Chrome extensions, so you don't gotta worry about that either. So, use my link below to download Opera GX today. I mean, it's free, so, I mean, you might as well give it a try. Anyways, back to the video. Guys, we've got a bit of a crisis on our hands. My female demographic is dwindling. It's a right sausage fest in here. But look at these stats, 11 0.8% women audience. That's really bad. Luckily, I've got a plan to get those numbers right up. I'll just play the girliest game I can find and they come flocking back. It really be that simple. And I think I've got the perfect game. Let's see ya. Uh, pink, princesses, horse riding, mermaids, figure skating, cake decorating. Bro, this is it. The only thing missing is bleeding astrology and we've got a full house. I think this game is the key to all my problems, so um, let's check it out. Now, the game starts like pretty much every Mario game ever. Walking in front of Peach's castle. Only this time, Toad shows up and tells Peach about the Sparkle Theatre. So, they head down and hold up. Peach in carrying her luggage again. First Luigi's Mansion 3 and now this. Like, I don't know man, it's not that hard. Looking a bit out of touch with the common man there, Peach, I'm not gonna lie. People are starting to talk. Anyway then, turns out the theatre has been taken over by Madame Grape. Her evil plan? To, um, rewrite the plays, I guess. Uh, truly the most diabolically evil plot of all time. It's like a metaphor for studio interference or something, I don't know. But worse yet, Peach loses her crown. Now, Peach without a crown looks kind of weird. I mean, I'm sorry, but I never noticed how flat her head looks without it. I mean, you could eat your dinner off that thing. I'm telling you, it ain't right. It's like a Goomba without eyebrows. It's just wrong. Right, so it's up to Peach to enter each production and set things right with the power of a new friend, Stella. Now, let's go. And the first thing we see, a dead body. Lovely, but no worries, because a little spark of magic and he's back on his feet dancing like nothing happened. Eh, maybe I should get my hands on some of that sparkle, considering, you know, I'm dead inside. I mean, it seems to work like a charm. Hmm, I wonder if it comes in powder form. So now we can go around sparking up these bad guys. And I've got to be honest, playing as Peach isn't that fun. Her movement is stilted and the combat is basically face an enemy and press A and they barely even do anything. If I was to compare it to anything, it's like when you play a world map in another game before entering the level, but that's the actual game itself. Luckily, after a bit, we find this sparkly doodad and we pick it up and, ooh, she transforms into Sword Fighter Peach. I'd let her slice me up any day of the week if you know what I mean. And now things feel a little bit more exciting. You can slice, you can dice, you can do this cool little dodge and... 
Well, that's about it. So, we beat up some enemies, and eventually we get attacked by this giant plant, and suddenly, there's a bunch of big old vines tangling Peach up into... Reminds me of some fan art I saw once, actually. But yeah, that's basically the gist of the levels. You go in, play a standard Peach, get a little scenario, setting things up, find a transformation, and the gameplay changes up. And there's quite a lot of these too. Ten to be exact, so um, let's just take a look at them all, actually. Next up, we got a Ninja Peach. I'd let her crew nine me any day of a week if you know what I mean. So, these levels have a stealth aspect to them. You can hide in grass, underwater, or even sneak on the walls. I mean, I've never seen such stealth in my entire life. Where could she be? I think we are witnessing a true professional here. I mean, where am I? I'm completely invisible to the naked eye. She can also wall jump, run on walls, and even summon the power of water. Pfft, what a show off. I can do that too. It's called taking a piss. You don't see me making a big deal about it, do you? Then, we have Cowgirl Peach. I'd let her lasso me any day of the week if you know what I mean. Her main thing is that you can pick up barrels and yeet them at enemies. It's like Donkey Kong if Donkey Kong was a cute princess and not a big hawking angry gorilla. Although on second thoughts, hmm, maybe he was a princess this whole time. I'm sorry for ever doubting you, DK. Next up, we got Patisserie Peach. I'd let a patisserie me any day of it. Wait, what the fuck is a patisserie? I'm just gonna call her Baker Peach because I have a vocab range of a toddler. So this one's a bit more like a mini game, but it's cool. See, she can bake cookies at record speed. Don't need no oven, don't need nothing. She don't even mix the damn thing. She just waves it around and blammo. Eight instant fully formed and decorated cookies. Who knew baking was this easy? You know what? Let me give it a try. Ooh. Ah. Um, it's not doing anything. Uh, hocus pocus. Whoa. Nah, didn't do shit. Lie to again. We also have this mini game where you've got to decorate these giant cakes on a swing. Like, bro. Who needs a cake that big? What, are we feeding the world's fattest man over here or something? Jesus! But hold up, what's this? A big spooky ominous door just rises up from the ground? Don't you just hate it when that happens? But it looks like it's time for the first boss I'm afraid, so uh, best get this out of the way first. And it's a disco ball bird. And just like this girl, I think it's time for this thing to stay dead. So, the boss flails around, pooping out disco balls, changing gravity, and rolling and bouncing around. It's actually a surprisingly cool boss fight. I mean, you've got to attack these disco balls and send them flying back up into it. Then it explodes into this ominous dark void of pure evil or something, and with the power of love or some shit, you can override it and save the day. Three hits and blammo, we can access the second floor. And you know what that means, right? More costumes. Uh, let's check them out. First up, a Detective Peach. I'd let her use her magnifying glass on me any day of the week if you know what I mean. Wait. What does that mean? Anyway, these levels are a bit more unique than the others. See, the game slows down and we're in a sort of point and click mystery game where you've got to find clues and solve a mystery. It's a bit like Ace Attorney actually, if it was made for stupid babies. I mean, there isn't really anything complex here, but it's still all right. See, if you spot something out of sorts or you feel like someone's lying, you can use the power of intuition to give them the finger. Nothing is quite as satisfying as pointing the finger at someone, is there? Guilty or not, it doesn't matter as long as you have the moral high ground, it's all good. Next up, figure skating Peach. I'd let her figure me out any day of the week if you know what I mean. Now you might be thinking, is he gonna say that every single time? Is he gonna commit to the bit the entire video? The answer is yes. Yes I am. So these levels have our slippery ice physics, but hey, it's pretty fun to control and look how majestic the movement is. The best mechanic here is that certain symbols appear on the floor and you've got to press the corresponding button to do the move. It's fun to control and there's some cool challenges here like dodging these swinging balls which don't even damage you when you get hit. I did mention that this game is really easy right, but hey, we've even got a mini boss at the end. Death by beauty, eh? A problem I'm all too familiar with. Man, I'm handsome. Then we have Dashing Thief Peach. Not sure what the difference is between Dashing Thief and just a plain old normal thief. Like, did they just add dashing to romanticize the aspect of stealing from someone? Like, it's still a crime, Peach. I mean, if I shoot someone in the face and call myself a dashing murderer, I'm still going to jail. 
Oh, and also, I'd let it steal me any day of the week, if you know what I mean. I almost forgot that time, uh, my bad. But these levels are cool. Much more platform focused, and you have this neat little grappling hook. Yeah, it's swinging around like Spider-Man over here. It's pretty satisfying, chaining the attacks together. Mm, it feels good. Reminds me a bit of a uh, Chibi Robo Ziplash. You know, that game everyone loves, especially this guy. And the level ends with this neat little hand glider section. It's good stuff. But hold up, another spooky door? Come on now, I still have three costumes to get to first. But eh, uh, time for the second boss. But first, Madame Grape shows up again, and wait a second, are those floating hands? Are we gonna get another Nintendo floating hand boss? God, I hope so. Wait, ah, uh, never mind. It's just a snake. I mean, it's kind of neat, I guess, but... I got my hopes up a bit there. So this boss, and I mean, it's pretty obvious. You've got to avoid the spotlight and sneak through the arena. Get seen and it'll rewind time, which doesn't really do anything. Maybe it's painful, I don't know. Good job there's always conveniently placed walls everywhere or we might be in trouble. So you get to one of these things which blows up and blammo, I know a boss down. The bosses are really good so far, by the way. Anyway, we're on to the third floor, and we've got two new costumes to check out. First up, a mermaid peach. I'd let her lure me to my doom, if you know what I mean. And she's all about singing. She loves to sing. The voice of an angel. It's so good, in fact, that she can control sea life with it. She's like Aquaman, but less shit. I mean, Peach is used to bossing people around with zero regard for their well-being, so this is right up her alley. And at the end, the game turns into a rhythm game, and you've got to sing! Who knew Peach had such a powerful voice? <sighs> it's so whimsical. If I wasn't dead inside, it might even bring a tear to my eye. On to the next stage, and now, we're Mighty Peach. I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be. Cyborg? Superhero? I'm not sure, but I'd let her rescue me any day of the week if you know what I mean. And these levels are a bit more combat focused. You can pick things up and yeet her at enemies, and you can punch the shit out of things with its deep and complex combat of walking up to an enemy and pressing a single button. You can even live out your fantasies of being liked by the general public. But eventually, a giant UFO attacks and you take flight with a little flying section. It's, it's, it's cool. I like it. But that's it for the new costumes for this floor. I mean, there are more levels, but I'll get back to those later. Because the bleeding door is back. I mean, I've heard a door-to-door salesman. But this is ridiculous. The boss itself and it's basically the Cheshire Cat. And it's kind of creepy, actually. In fact, I feel like this is some childhood drama waiting to happen. And this boss is pretty tricky, too. I mean, in comparison to the rest of the game, anyway. I feel like if you're a dumb little kid, this boss is going to be a bit of a roadblock. See, you've got to hit this mouse, which turns into a bomb, and you've got to make sure the bomb's in the middle as it slams down his paws and then it flings up and hits it, and it's not even obvious how to dodge that attack either. I mean, jumping works, but why? The paws hit the whole arena. It doesn't really make sense. And on top of that, you've got to make sure the bomb doesn't get destroyed by its slam attack. It's just quite a lot to juggle. It's a good fight, though. And now, we're onto the fourth floor, and at last, we make it to our final transformation. I mean, this took a lot longer than I expected, but we kept the best till last. Kung Fu Peach. I'd let a karate chop my balls any day of the week, if you know what I mean. And this is personally my favorite transformation. You got hype music, a ton of enemies to mow down, this cool spinning kick attack, you got platforming challenges, and it just feels great to play. Mixed in with some fun mini bosses, and it's a good time. But that's it. That's all the transformations. And now it's time for the fourth boss. And Madame Grape is back. And do we get to fight her this time? Come on, floating hand boss, here we come. Ah, never mind, it's a spotlight. I see what we did there, but didn't they already do that with a snake? Like, you've got two light-related bosses in the same game. I mean, you ran out of ideas already. You hate to see it. The boss itself is fine. It's probably the least interesting in the game. You've got a bit of a Ganondorf thing going on here where you've got to reflect the energy balls back into it. And sometimes it turns everything into a mirror and you've got to do some deep, complex maths to figure it out. But that's it. We're on to the final floor. But the thing is, I ain't really talked about the actual game that much ever. I mean, you might be thinking, is it even good? What do you do? What's even the goal? I mean, all you did was make the same borderline sexist joke 10 times in a row, and it wasn't even fun the first time. But calm down, because now I'm going to talk about it, alright? See, each costume has three levels spread throughout the game, for a grand total of 30 levels. The first level, you typically play a standard peach for a bit. You meet some characters, learn about the world, it sets the story up nicely, and whilst the gameplay is simple, 
It's incredibly charming and frankly, it's fun to look at. I mean, the level design and environment are just incredibly creative. I mean, even just little things like the stage spinning around or riding on this cute little turtle. They really commit to the whole stage idea of the entire game and I don't know what to tell you, it won me over. And the second level of each costume sort of acts as the second act of the play. The scenario continues, you start off immediately into the action, and you're already in your costume. So, as you'd expect, it builds upon the mechanics previously introduced. And these levels often raise the stakes, and they're great. There's some actually pretty cool set pieces here, which I did not expect going into this game. Cowgirl Peach is riding a horse, taking down a runaway train. You got a kaiju battle against some aliens. Heck, even the baking minigame gets intense, as you're fighting off a horde of zombies as you make cookies. I mean, was you expecting that bacon minigame to turn into a zombie outbreak? Because I didn't. So the game might seem directionless and all over the place, but I think these various gameplay styles actually merge together quite nicely into the overall package. Like, the various costumes are different, but they all sort of share the base gameplay style, so it feels more consistent than you think. And when you complete the second act of each transformation, you can head into the spooky basement of the final levels. And these are much more sinister and messed up. They didn't even really plays anymore, it's all distorted and corrupted by evil. And these levels, as you'd expect, are the most difficult in the game. Usually ending in some sort of face-off against that story's villain and rescuing the captured sparkles, who are the stars of the various plays by the way. I mean, there's so much that happens in this game that it would be impossible to cover it all. I mean, every level feels pretty unique. Like, say what you want about the gameplay, but the sheer creativity and effort that has gone into each level is pretty impressive if you ask me. Every time you enter a new floor, you get a sense of anticipation to see what's in store, and it mixes in a nice steady stream of new transformations as you progress. I mean, nothing really outside is welcome. Well, maybe the detective levels do, but 9 out of 10 ain't bad. Each level also has a bunch of sparkle gems to collect. And these are usually hidden throughout the levels or locked behind certain challenges. Usually meaning you need to complete things perfectly to get them more. I like them. They constantly keep you on your toes and they give you something to work towards. But these things at least keep it engaging and you can't be slacking off. I mean, chances are you're gonna miss a few no matter how hard you try. Oh and uh, as you may have noticed, you can customise Peach's dress. There's loads of these to unlock and you're constantly rewarded as you play. So if you have ever wanted to live out your dream of slightly changing Peach's dress design, today is your lucky day. You can even customise Stella. Remember her? No? What the hell's with you? Right, anyway, we do all the levels, we rescue all the actors, and now it is time for the final boss. But hold up, the door won't open. We're stuck. Oh well, we tried our best. No harm in giving up now. But then, right, all our friends come and give us their powers. It's like some JRPG shit. The sparkles are so intense, Peach transforms one more time into Radiant Peach, also known as a literal goddess. Guys, I think I'm in love. So, she opens the door, and Madam Grape is pissed. I don't actually know why this lass hates Peach so much, but who cares? It's time to kick her ass. And just like that, we're shooting the shit out of her. It's actually pretty hype. There's fireworks, there's trains, there's planes, there's random falling blocks. I mean, I've got to hand it to old Grape over here. She knows how to put on a show, but alas, she is defeated. Peach shoots out a Kamehameha, and blammo! dead nothing but an old mask on the floor peach transforms back and the day is saved but wait it ain't over oh shit bro she just destroyed the entire theater and now she's bleeding giant why is this oddly epic so radiant peach returns and i can hardly believe it myself but they did it the madmen did it it's a floating hand boss and it couldn't get any more floating hand if it tried. This boss fight's basically an artistic andros, and Peach is shooting a freaking laser beam out of her hand. I mean, it's nuts. I mean, look at this shit. But eventually, we smash a mask, and Peach goes full supersonic and blasts right into her and completely obliterates her. Like, holy shit, that was fucking awesome. Probably would have made it on my top 10 floating hand bosses, to be honest. I'm sorry, take your tongue, but. It's time to go. Anyway, we fix the theatre with a the power of sparkle, which can basically do anything at this point. We all cheer, and everything is delightful, and that's the game. The credits roll, we get a little tease that Grape might return, which is cool, and Peach gets her crown back. Farewell, oddly flathead, and all is well with the world. But there is some post-game content. We got some boss challenges, which can actually be quite tricky. 
Seriously, fuck this cat boss. If you know, you know. And there's a high score challenge on each floor to do. And every single level now has three hidden ninjas to find, as well as cleaning up any collectibles you missed. So, to be honest, you basically have to play the entire game twice, which is a little tedious. But you know me, I did it all, because I have no life. And was it worth it? Probably not. But hey, you get a nice dress at least. Look at it, it's so sparkly. So, uh, that's Peach's Showtime. I know a lot of people are unsure about this game, and the demo kinda sucked, but I gotta be honest, I love this game. Yeah, the gameplay is simple, but it's fun, it's varied, and to me, it was never boring. It just kept introducing things, and it was nice to see the Mario universe expanded. We got new characters, new villains, Peach turned into an all-powerful being. We got a lot. The whole thing was so charming, and, and frankly, it was adorable from start to finish. And if you ask me, we need more of that shit in this world. Oh, and one more thing. I'd let her radiant over me any day of the week, if you know what I mean. And the Goomba of the week is the Odd Fan. Bit of an odd one, actually. I mean, don't tell anyone. But I saw him eating glue once. It was very odd indeed. 